if there's one person that uh, I would, can name to say he lives for art, and that would be Lin Zeping. Passionate is used, passion is used all the time. But when you watch Lin Zeping obsess with his art, you know that being passionate is about being very, very happy. And it's extremely sad, you know, joyous and extremely disappointed, you know. And it, it, it comes with, uh, with the territory. It comes with being obsessed with something. Well, he is one man that you cannot separate him from the art. Yeah. The art defines the man, the man defines the art. But I think with Lin Ziping, he bows down to his art. So it's, uh, how do I say this? He, it totally defines him, he totally embodies him. You know, so sometimes when I look at him, it's a bit like his hands have extensions and they are brushes, you know. When you talk to him, he can talk about a lot of things, but invariably you will go back to art. Invariably you will go back to what he's painting today. Invariably you will uh, go back to, do you think I've improved? Uh, one of the most common questions he asks people who visit him and when shown uh, his new work would be, do you think I have improved? So this is something that's been always at the back of his mind, which is that he's not an artist who wants to look back. He's constantly looking forward into the future, thinking about his next work, thinking about areas for improvement, areas where he could have artistic breakthroughs. He came from a very humble background, uh, therefore you know, his family had no means uh, for him to further his interests in art uh, when he was a young boy, uh, which meant that he never went to art school. Uh, so all that he knows about art uh, was through you know, some early exposure when he studied art in uh, had, had art lessons in primary and secondary school and thereafter um, he had to do a lot of self-learning, uh, reading books, talking to artists, um, looking at other artists' works, and constantly trying to improve himself. Ziping has had a very interesting art career. Um, many people know that he was self-taught, and uh, in his early period, although he was very interested in calligraphy and he practices writing every day, he actually started an artist, uh, he started his painting career uh, more as an oil painter. So in the 60s and 70s, he often exhibited uh, his oil paintings, um, traveling and exhibiting together with a group of friends, informally known as a 10-man group. And his style of painting was fairly realistic yeah, or naturalistic. When he retired, uh, when he turned 60 um, from his full-time job as a school principal, uh, he then decided to embark on Chinese ink painting in earnest. And this was quite a natural development given that he was already very strong in calligraphy. So moving into Chinese painting uh, was part of the, his artistic development. And Coincidentally, when he became a full-time artist in the 1980s, it was also a period when Singapore's uh, landscape was undergoing drastic change. Uh, there was uh, tremendous uh, urban redevelopment, buildings were being torn down in Chinatown, uh, kampongs were being uh, demolished uh, to build new housing, and uh, all these were areas which Lim Ziping had grown up with and was uh, very fond of. So he kind of set a mission for himself to use his uh, ink painting uh, to document these disappearing sites. So during the period of the 80s, uh, he painted you know, hundreds of paintings uh, of Singapore's disappearing uh, scenes. And then I'm Wang, you know, I really like this. I like Singapore, so I think I'm in Singapore, I still want to put it uh, 
过去，这是这就是现在新加坡，或现在新加坡不是过去新加坡，所以我把过去好好的啊，都画下来，那、啊、成为这个有历史性的东西啊，有历史价值，这这方面。Mm. <laughs> Moved into his older years, uh, when he turned 80, he found that it was increasingly more difficult for him to work outdoors, uh, to work on site. Then he moved indoors, and that freed him up to work on much larger pieces. Uh, he was no longer restricted by what he saw outdoors, and he could rely on his memory and his imagination uh, to create very um, innovative and monumental works. Uh, so his works became much more colourful, more abstract, and I would say much more infused uh, with the calligraphic energy. So I think um, his, his life uh, as an artist has been tremendously exciting, and I think it's been a privilege that we've been able to follow his career so far. Um, as we all know, uh, he continues in that very fine tradition of uh, local artists who is very well versed in different art traditions. I'm talking about Chinese art traditions like calligraphy and ink painting as well as uh, Western mediums uh, like oil painting, watercolour. So both art forms actually are very rich traditions and they inform each other. So an artist who is well versed in both uh, would find his or her practice tremendously enriched. Uh, the other way that Lim Tzu Ping would be remembered would be of course to his, through his contribution to Chinese ink painting in Singapore. Uh, ink painting has again been part of our tradition since um, early 20th century and uh, this was brought over by a group of artists who had been born in China, trained in the Shanghai School of Painting Tradition. And uh, Lim Tzu Ping had studied or admired uh, some of these early pioneers uh, when he was a young artist. Um, and from there, I think he then went on to develop his own practice. Um, as I mentioned, uh, he really pushed the medium of calligraphy uh, to a very extreme, exciting form uh, that becomes like an abstract visual language that can be appreciated beyond the content of the words. So in that respect, I think, again, uh, Lim Tzu Ping uh, would hold a very special place in Singapore's art history. Thank uh 其中这个这个选出来那么
可以留下来。It's enjoyable, even though it's a tough, but I love it because, like what I said earlier on,、uh, I don't interview him as such. I watch him, I observe him, and of course, sometimes observing him is not very productive. <laughs> you sit there and you wait, you know. So those are challenges, but I, I'm going to miss them. I don't really interview him as such. I wait and wait. I I, I watch him and I wait. Out,、uh, the people in the room may ask him a question and he will talk. But I wait for moments of clarity. And when he's very clear, that's if he's、uh, rested very well. He comes up with gems. He comes up with things about his art that truly nourish and. Bring the book to many levels, so、uh, I will miss those times because I think they are precious. They are few, but enough for a book.、Yeah. Um, he says, "To be a good artist, you need to be a good person first." And in many things that he's done, and they are in the book. You truly believe that he is first and foremost a good person, and he truly believes that, and that is so much part of his eternal self that when he actually paints, that that aspect of good、uh, comes out. Well, my husband is to tell them this painting must be careful, must be careful. 不不可，就是，嗯，说话不可以投机取巧，嗯，就是没有捷径可走了。就是说，要要努力，要认真，嗯，啊，这个实实在在的说话，嗯，而且要画自己啊熟悉的地方，好像我们自己。这乡土应该要要先画自己乡土的这个，那、嗯、那、嗯、这这个熟悉的这这这个这个地方，而后才那、嗯嗯、到外地去做画。真在新加坡，争取在新加坡啊、呃，这个有名气，而且应该一个画家应该。啊，那向国际的舞台这方面去啊，去努力啊，这这个对自己也好，对国家也好。子平 speaker's contribution、uh, has been the very exemplary way、uh, he led his life. As an artist,、um, he has not let adversity、uh, get the better of him. I think his spirit of、uh, constantly wanting to improve, despite having won many local and international accolades, is、uh, something that we should all admire and emulate. He once told me that I, I say you 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 don't talk about anyone that I know in a very negative. A sense, and he says, "Life is so short." Even though he has lived, you know, to a hundred, he says, "Life is so short. Why focus on the negatives?" So you realize that the reason why this man lives to a hundred and probably many more years is because he focuses on the positives. You know, so of course, all these things become cliche when we talk about it. And I wish that by reading the book, it isn't a cliche. That you can focus on just the positives and live a good life.